Welcome to a tour video on Bitsy 8. In this video, we're going to talk about items and inventory. So in previous videos, we've been building across all the concepts that we know within Bitsy. We started by examining the avatar, the thing we move around, tiles, which potentially could be background or walls, sprites, things we interact with, and items, things we use. But I've not previously, within this series, discussed items. Part of that is because I wanted to cover all of the initial concepts so when we start to talk about items and some complexities that come with items, we already have a lot of groundwork by understanding how Bitsy interacts with different concepts in different ways. Part of that was also understanding how when we interact with sprites, we can use the dialogue tool to change the dialogue, the interaction we have when we interact with that sprite. So let's go ahead and shift the topic now to items. So over here in the paint tool, avatar, tile, sprite, item is the last one. So if you create a new game within Bitsy, you have access to a single item, tea, and it says you found a nice warm cup of tea down here in the dialogue. And remember, of course, we can break the dialogue out into its own tool right here that we previously saw when we worked with interactions for the sprites. So you found a nice warm cup of tea right here. Okay, so with the selected, I'm gonna go ahead and drop four of these into the world. Now, I don't need the dialog tool, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this for right now. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna now play this and we're going to use the item. It's gonna sound a little strange. So down here, you found a nice warm cup of tea and then notice it's gone. The same with this one, it's gone. And this one, it's gone. And this one, it's gone. So the major difference between interacting with a sprite and interacting with an item is interactions with an item remove the item from the room. Whereas this is a major difference for sprites, we can continue to interact with the sprite that exists in the room. Part of that difference comes in what we do with items. We use or have them. So once we've interacted with an item, generally the game assumes, okay, it's now part of something called inventory. So to understand that, we're gonna have to use a completely different tool. So let's go ahead and use the inventory tool. So over here for item, I've got T selected. I'm gonna click on inventory and it's gonna pop out a completely different tool called inventory. Right now we're gonna concentrate on items. We'll get to variables as part of a later video. So right here, inventory and items, we have T zero key zero. So every time we interact with T, we're going to gain a T item as part of our items in our inventory. So let's go ahead and see this in action. So pay attention that right here, and especially this T count, as I interact with the T items within a room, so we see you found a nice warm cup of tea. Now this changed to one over here. Same thing again, move to the next one, this changed to two. Move to the next one, this changed to three. Move to the next one, this changed to four. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop play. And we'll reset back to zero. So over here in the inventory tool, now we can keep track of the things we use or the things we have. So for every item that's within a room, it is potentially a collectible. When we interact with it, we will see its dialogue, if it has any, and then we will immediately pick the th thing up. Or in other words, we will use it. So as we're thinking about working with inventory and items now, then we can create new items that we can then pick up by looking at their dialogue, which would then be reflected in the inventory. So let's go ahead and create a new item just to really see this in process. So we've got one item right here, that's T. Let's go ahead and create a new one. We've got an umbrella. Put the umbrella into the room. Well, roughly an umbrella. I'm not gonna add any dialogue, but notice over here, as soon as I confirm this, umbrella shows up over here in inventory, a thing we can use, collect, and have. So let's go ahead and play. Notice no dialogue, we just picked it up. So if we don't add any dialogue, we won't see any dialogue, and we immediately 
have the item in our inventory as a count. The number of keys we have collected, the number potentially of keys we have collected, the number of umbrellas we have collected. And notice that capitalization is important. This is like uppercase U, this is an uppercase U. The same with lowercase T and lowercase T, literally for the T item. So as part of this video, we have now gotten into working with items. So we interact with sprites, which remain in the room, but when we interact with items, we pick them up and they become part of our inventory. So I'm going to pause here as we go through these concepts, because in order to start to use items, we're going to need a whole other video to talk a little bit more about items and how they affect other things we've already seen. Principally, things like branching lists will be important in a future video. But at least for right now, when we have items, and they are in a room, because again, rooms are just subsections of games or stories within Bitsy, when we interact with that item, we then pick that item up, and it becomes part of our inventory and in our items, which will allow us, in a future video, to check to see if we have picked up that item or not, or picked up a certain number of items or not, and we will circle back to interactions with sprites, who will be able to tell us information about the inventory that we have. All incredibly important details as we slowly learn about how to do more things within Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.